Hey now everybody, it's Vernon from Reptilia Exotica. I've got a really exciting video for you guys today. It does not have to do with reptiles, it's got to do with invertebrates. Uh, we were at a local reptile show yesterday and hooked up with uh, Taryn from isopod.com and he had some really, really cool uh, invertebrate species. And one of them that caught my eye uh, was a, a, it's a, it's a, Thai species of kind of like a pill millipede. That's that's as close as he could tell me, and as close as the research that I could do could tell me as well. So uh, here, let me show you guys. So we're looking at a variety of as, as near as I can tell. It's in the genus Ropalomeris, and the species to me. Now don't quote me on this because I cannot find enough information to say this conclusively, but the species looks like Ropelomeris carnifex. I haven't been able to find anything that looks exactly like these guys really, um, except for what Taryn had and maybe one or two pictures that weren't really clear enough for me to make a definitive identification that you know, they are Ropalomeris carnifex. So what we're going to be doing today is kind of observing these guys. And I mean, they look a lot like Armadillidium species or Armadillidium genus of um, isopod. But they are not. They are in fact millipedes. They have an extra pair of legs per segment of their body. Let's see if I can get a cool shot of it here for you guys. It's really tough. I don't really know a whole lot about these, and nobody else does either. But you can see they have double the amount of legs that an isopod would have. And his little antennae, I don't know if they're blind or what, but I can tell you this, is just by observing these guys, those little antennae are very, very important to these guys. I, I wish I knew more, I wish I could tell you more about them. Uh, they're obviously, from what I can tell, they're detrivores meaning they consume mostly dead plant material and decaying plant material. Other than that, I don't know, and I don't think you know the internet really knows much about these guys. We don't know how to identify uh, their sex. We don't know if they have a sex. We don't know how they reproduce. We don't know uh, exactly what they eat, what temperatures they you know, thrive and breed in. We don't know exactly how to keep them. We got some pretty good ideas. It seems like they're in, in you know, husbandry practice, if you go pretty close to the way you would keep an isopod colony, you're probably going to do okay, but here in the States, I haven't heard of a single person, you know, that's successfully kept and bred this particular species. So this is really exciting. We're going to move forward. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do to set these guys up. Once again, I'm no authority. I don't really know. I've been able to find a handful of information on Instagram and actually just on Instagram, it's wild. If you go on YouTube, you can find some videos of these guys, but they don't say a goddamn thing. Like zero talking during the video. It's wild. Like almost no information exists on this species. So I'm pretty excited to study them and I'm gonna take you guys along for that journey and hopefully we can figure this out together and find out what makes these guys tick and what we can do to you know, bring these guys into the hobby here in the States. So guys, I think I got to apologize here for my crappy aspect ratio. I got so excited I forgot my camera wasn't oriented the right way. But from here on out, I'm gonna be in a, a tripod so I won't really have to worry about that. For these guys, uh, these guys were not cheap. Like I said, they were very uh, expensive. And as far as I can tell, they're very rare, especially here in the United States. So I paid a lot of money for these guys. I have four of them. I wanna treat them with you know the utmost care and I've heard really good things about the Ligardi Premium Millipede and Isopod substrate, so I'm gonna try that out. I usually use my own substrate, but I really don't want there to be any margin for error here. I've also got a 14 quart bin, just super clear. Um, yeah, I wanna be able to see these guys and observe them, so I wanted to go with something really clear. It's, you know, it's about 13 inches long by nine inches tall by about 11 inches wide. That should be plenty big for these guys, there's only four of them, but I definitely wanted to be able to give them some depth to the substrate. 
I went ahead and please don't make fun of my my uh, chiffon job here, but I, I just took some really fine white chiffon. Never thought I'd be working with chiffon, never in my life. Uh, cut it to fit a little hole that I cut out of the lid so we can have some good ventilation here while keeping out any unwanted bugs because as we speak we're having uh, a fungus gnat epidemic here at Reptilia Exotica. So that's not good. We want to keep those nasty little buggers out, but we also want to be able to have a lid that we can see through that also provides good ventilation. So that's why I went with this lid and decided to go for some chiffon on there just to give them ventilation. And I found that around here, uh, the fungus gnats can get through even the finest of outdoor you know, mesh screens. So that's why I went with chiffon. Still good airflow, but literally nothing. It's, it's like a couple of microns big, so it's like having a coffee filter on there, but still with good airflow. So I don't really know what to expect when I open this bag. I'm going to open it now and begin to dump the substrate in. I'm probably gonna fill it. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Oh my god, it stinks! Holy mackerel! Whoa, my god! <laughs> oh my! Guys, oh dude, I wish we had smell o vision right now. This, I, I'm not, I swear to you, this stuff reeks. Holy, bleh. oh wow, that means, that probably is a good thing. I'm sure they're gonna love it. But my god, oh, I gotta, I gotta close it back up until I'm ready. Oh shit. Maybe, uh, maybe, <laughs> I think I might be having to keep these guys in the basement. Uh, Mrs. Reptilia Exotica is probably not gonna, uh, allow me to keep these dudes upstairs with the substrate. Uh, but anyway, I've got, all right, so I've got some wood. It's really, uh, it's rotting and it's really soft. And I found a bunch of, uh, Armadillidium nasatum and Armadillidium vulgare in amongst this wood. So my hypothesis is that if I break off a decent sized chunk of this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quick wet it down a little and then I'm gonna break it up into little bits and mix it in with the substrate. I probably don't need it, but that's what uh, the only person I've been able to talk to that has these advised me to do. So I'm gonna do that. Wet this stuff down pretty good. Um, I Actually, it's not that good because it's still dry in the middle, but I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna crunch it up with my hands as good as I can. Uh, I think I'm, this is probably overkill for this substrate because it, I mean, it is, god dang, with that smell, I'm telling you, it's chock full of nutrients. So, uh, this is probably overkill, but that's kind of my middle name, overkill, if you hadn't noticed already. If you've seen our vivariums, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I'm just, so I'm just going to take and kind of break it up into small pieces. And I'm going to mix this in with the substrate, and you know what, I think just so I don't get too filthy, I'm going to get something to mix it with. Because I'm feeling this is going to be really messy. I went ahead and threw some uh, moist spag moss in there as well. Probably don't need it, but like I said, overkill is the name of the game here. I'm going to go ahead, that looks like it might be about halfway, jump it about halfway in. I'm using my least favorite uh, kitchen utensil here. And I'm just gonna give this a real nice mix. Deeper the better, yeah? Well, let's see, where are we at? That's not even halfway. So I'm gonna go, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. It's never a bad thing, right ladies? A little bit deeper. Sorry, it's supposed to be family friendly. And mix it up again the better or so I've been told <laughs> I can't say that without it sounding dirty <laughs> I'm sorry that's a problem man. all right so we've got I can see there's there's all kinds of leaf litter in here this looks just like a really nice healthy organic compost mix almost I, you know they I read the instructions on the bag they say not to let it dry out you know this that, and the other thing the deeper the better I've got just a little bit left and I'm not even halfway up the substrate I'm gonna reserve a little bit of it back just to top it off in case these guys start to consume this stuff like crazy or something. Just gonna get one more little mix like so. And then onto phase two, which is escaping the bad boy. So I'm gonna leave it relatively flat. Like that. Alright, so next step is I took a chunk of this big wood block that I had and I just soaked it down. Like I just gave it a really good 
soaking with some uh, dechlorinated water. I'm just gonna drop that right in on one side and then I'm going to put another piece in, not quite as big, I guess. So another piece in that's just bone dry. So I'm gonna try my best to give these guys a gradient to see what they really like. So I'm gonna put just like that. Give them a nice little gradient with some space on both sides. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to think this out and plan this ahead. Because uh, I really don't want, I, I want this to, to succeed. Uh, so what else I'm going to do is I got this, my culture. I'm going to really carefully start to put these guys in here. Now what I've done is I've tried some various foods on them. I felt like they became way more active once I opened the enclosure top with this little lid. So this is the wood that they've been, uh, that they've been on for about 24 hours. And I can't, I should have weighed it before, but I know they've been eating it. Um, and the reason I know that is because, you can see here, see all that stuff right there in the corner? No, not, the, not the orange stuff, that's fish food. But the rest of it appears to be frass or poop or something. That lets me know that they are consuming this wood. I put some bug burger in here as well and I gave them a little bit of Rapashi morning wood. Just a little sliver of it just to see. Uh, it didn't look like they really gave a crap about either one of those things, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that. Ooh, growing some stuff. That one's not going in there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put everything else. Just carefully place it right down into the substrate. There's my morning wood. There's my bug burger to see, you know, kind of gauge what, what they're gonna like. And then I'm gonna really carefully, not disturbing them too much. I mean, these guys are pretty hardy, so I shouldn't. That is the big boy right there. He's, I, I don't know if it's a female or a male, but it's definitely the largest uh, that I've got here. Charcoal. And we've got another piece of something here that's got some decay going on. I'm not really sure what that is, but that's gonna go in too. And I'm just going to try and carefully get these guys right in there, just like that. Ball up on me. Got one guy left. Little buddy. This guy right down under the wood. Let's see if he likes it. Let's see. Oh, you got there, buddy. Oh, it's your favorite, I think. Nice rotting wood. There you go, homie. All right. So. Now, I, I feel like I should retain this. I don't know for a fact that those little things there are poop. For all I know, they're eggs. Who the hell knows? Nobody knows. That's what's so cool about this experiment. I don't know. I'm just kind of emulating what I would do, you know, for a really, um, a really rare isopod species. I really, honestly, have no idea what to do here. So. Uh, I'm going to take the substrate that I got them in, which looks like mostly cocoa fiber, and I'm going to sort of stir it in. I'm not, I'm not disrupting anybody here because they're all over on the other side, so I'm just going to kind of stir this in a little, mix it up. I feel like that is going to increase my chances of success to kind of really... Now I know that in this corner, I've got some of the original substrate. Put that piece down. That's going to be kind of our dry area. We're going to have a little bit of a wetter side and area down on this end. And to supplement that, I'm going to give these guys just a little bit of spag moss down here. Uh, 
It also, I think, I don't know, I think this is going to be sort of important, a little piece of cuddle bone. I have no idea what it's going to do, if anything, but I'm going to offer it. I want to make sure that I'm doing my absolute best to provide anything and everything that these guys could need. A lot of the research that I did, everything I was able to find out was really advising against keeping any sort of species of pill millipede because it was saying that they were actually, you know, when we bring them into captivity, that they're actually missing something out of their diet. Some sort of beneficial bacteria, something like that, which is why um, I'm giving them mostly things that are from nature. I haven't sterilized this substrate. I, I, I am almost positive that Lugardi hasn't sterilized their substrate either because of the way it smelled. My God, that stuff is potent. It's amazing. I, I mean, just by the way it smelled, I have a feeling it's gonna be awesome. So what I'm gonna do also is just kind of scatter a little bit of leaf litter. I don't wanna freak them out with it. Uh, the guy that I got these dudes from said that he uses very little leaf litter in his cultures. He had probably three times this many, I guess, in the culture that he showed me. So I'm just gonna scatter. Uh, one of these is a magnolia leaf, one of these is a, I mean, the rest of these are dry oak. I'm just gonna offer a little bit of leaf litter too, just in case. But uh, this, these little pieces of cuddle bone can provide calcium. Uh, I think we, uh, everything I've thought of, I've, I've tried to really cover all the bases here with regard to what their nutritional needs might be, what their, you know, humidity needs might be by giving them a, a humidity gradient. You know, it's going to be more humid down at this end and it's going to be drier down at this end. And I soaked down this whole piece of wood just to get them attracted to it. Uh, because that's what they've been doing for the past 24 hours. It's basically munching on this little piece of wood that I put in and pooping all over the place. So then I'm just gonna scatter the rest of those little pieces of cuddle bone. I don't know if I'm forgetting something or missing something. If they need more hiding places, I'm going to observe what they do and kind of continue to provide uh, things for them, uh, you know, based on what they do. I definitely want to keep an eye on both of these things. Uh, actually, I've, gave them, I've given them uh, four food items total, I guess, if, unless you want to count cuddle bone. So cuddle bone, morning wood, bug burger, maybe five, uh, leaf litter, which they can eat. Uh, this, I think this is oak. I think this is uh, decaying oak wood here that I've soaked down with some dechlorinated water. And hell, we'll see what happens here. I really don't know. Plus the substrate itself, chock full of nutrients, and we put it in pretty deep. That's probably about three or so inches of substrate in some spots. So uh, it should give them plenty of room to stretch out with the lid. They're going to have uh, ventilation where they need it here on the dry side. And then I didn't even put any holes down here on the other side because this, you know, this is probably about two inches by four inches. That should be plenty of ventilation with all the, you know, headroom that they've got. So once again, just to recap real quick and then I'm going to let you guys go because I'm getting real long winded. Ropelomeris carnifex is my assumption, is what the, the what, what this species is, I believe, and I've been told that they're very closely related to the Glomeris genus of pillbug, but I don't know that for a fact. I don't know that anybody really knows it for a fact. If you know and can give me some peer-reviewed scientific research on these creatures, I would be more than happy to read it. Or if you've got opinions or anything else, or you just want to talk about you know, what the possibilities of these guys could be. Just drop me some uh, some comments down below. Hit like, hit subscribe so you can watch these guys grow. Uh, I have a funny feeling they're gonna get bigger than this. So this may just be the beginning of a crazy journey with these dudes. So, once again, Vernon from Reptilia Exotica saying baba booey to y'all. Have a great week.